It's been well over one month since the Deontay Wilder vs Tyson Fury 2 fight and still there are people pushing this glove gate with a multitude of ways to shame or assassinate Tyson Fury's character. Although it keeps the boxing community, more so the Wilder fanatics occupied during the corona lockdown, you gotta ask yourself, what is the point of all this? I mean there are still people coming out of the woodwork claiming that Tyson Fury cheated so openly the result of February 22nd, 2020 should be overturned. Hey, what's going on? This is Boxing Subjective Observer and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Feel free to like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy the content. Now, since there were new people coming out in the last weeks shining their light on what is still Glovegate, I intentionally waited to cover part four. So in this episode, you're gonna see the latest claims on Tyson Fury, which I thought would have some sort of merit, including some experts giving their various takes on why Tyson Fury did cheat, according to them. Now we're gonna allow these people to speak their piece because here on Ringside Stories, we're about facts, fairness, and proper context. So here we have Joey Spencer, a 20-year-old pro fighter who's from Michigan and by his own account familiar with gyms in the Michigan area, such as the Kronk Gym. So here Spencer is sharing some of his thoughts on Glovegate in an interview with fighthype.com. Shout out to them. Let's have Mr. Spencer speak his piece and I'll chime in. Who was the ref for the second fight, bro? Uh, I think it was... It was Kenny. Jack Reese, right? For the first one was Jack Reese. But I okay, believe Kenny Bayless one. was the second one. So, I think that... If anything, it was the ref's job to make sure that the gloves were on right. They obviously weren't. Well, if the gloves weren't right in this fight, that can only mean that everyone was in on the gag. The refs, the commission, the WBC, and even Team Wilder. Because as former IBF world champion East Shea Smith said in episode three of the Glovegate saga. Needless to say, the commission is very strict, especially Las Vegas, especially California, especially New York. The commission is very strict on uh, gloves. They're, they're making sure your hands are getting, you're making sure your hands are getting wrapped. They, they, they have to, when you're ready to wrap your hands, you have to let them know, they watch. They, they're the ones that you see signature on the hand wraps. They're the ones signature you see on the boxing gloves, they're in there the whole time. Especially if you're a co-main or main event, that attendant is gonna be in your locker room the whole time. Has Joey Spencer ever been a main event or even a co-main event? He was hitting with the bare knuckle. I literally, you know, you can see it in the video. That is a real thing. And not only that, but he trains, he trained in Detroit for the early part of his career. That is absolutely false, sir. Tyson Fury was active in Britain for the majority of his career. When Fury was about 10 fights in around 2010, he came over to the Krong Gym in Detroit because his cousin Andy Lee was training there. And yet, he trained with the legendary Manny Stewart, RIP, but Fury only spent three weeks in Detroit. Article is linked in the description box below. I trained in Detroit my whole life. That was a thing that Detroit guys would teach and do in the gyms and even in sparring but even in amateur fights they would put the gloves on that way and they would leave them loose and leave them flappy and put the wrist on the knuckle on purpose and they would actually teach you to do that so here spencer is accusing tyson fury to suit his narrative that boxing gyms in the michigan area use this illegal tactic of hitting the opponent with bare knuckles allegedly but it wasn't like fury changed training camps training in detroit full time so if Fury was indeed cheating, it means he would have implemented this tactic after a three week stay in Detroit, which would be pretty unlikely if you ask me, while he was training and fighting in the UK for the majority of his career. So that is something that he did. It's a tactic. It wasn't an accident. He did it on purpose. Um, I'm not even gonna say, look, he, you know, I, I, I don't know where I stand on it. So we're supposed to believe that Fury went to train in Detroit for three weeks came back to the UK and started implementing these illegal tactics for all of his professional career from 2010 up until now? <laughs> when you do it, you're hitting, um, you're basically landing the shot with a bare fist. Um, it's uh, definitely changed the impact of the shot. Well, it's clear that he mixes facts and makes points that hold zero merits. 
I mean, at the beginning of the interview, Spencer thought that the referee in the Wilder vs. Fury 2 fight was Jack Reese. Oh, hell no! Because like many Wilder fanatics, Spencer Jr. is referring to footage that was from the first Wilder vs. Fury fight. Mm. You're getting hit with something harder than normal. It's like, well, you know, you don't really put your finger on it, but you just know it to be true. And I can tell you that Wilder's face showed that he was getting hit with something harder than normal too. No, sir. Wilder got hit because of his lack of defense. And speaking of the legal shots, you mean these shots? <laughs> and that lets you know that this kid is just riding the wave of what's out there on social media. Because Spencer has proven he's not fully informed about Tyson Fury's career, mixes a lot of facts to concoct a narrative that isn't even factually correct. And if people don't share any specifics on fighters, trainers, and gyms, your claim is just an opinion, a perspective. Definitely meant to do it. It's, a, it's an old school trick. Um, you know, as a boxer who's been around in boxing and boxing since I was seven years old, I've definitely uh, come across this more than once. Spencer hasn't proven anything, and we're supposed to take his word just because he's a professional fighter who trained in Michigan? Sorry, but in journalism, that wouldn't qualify as a reliable source. I just took a segment of what I believe to be the most important part, but feel free to have a look at the full interview. Link in the description box below. Days after the boxing glove experiment in the Mayweather gym, the Mayweather channel asked former professional fighter Dewey Cooper his take on Glovegate. Cooper was a former kickboxing world champion and had 25 bouts as a professional boxer. So when it comes to gloves and the professional fight game, I think Cooper's opinion is to be taken seriously. Now keep in mind, Dewey Cooper is making a point of Fury throwing illegal shots. See, you can feel a knuckle there. And it, 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 you know, it's a hard strike. It's nothing like turning the knuckle over for real, like in a real hook though. If you miss with the knuckles, guess what you got? A very deadly strike in martial arts, that palm strike. That's why in boxing it's illegal to hit with the palm or the open side of your glove. And Cooper is correct. Those strikes are illegal. But he went on to say- But a lot of people get wild in boxing fights and swing with the palm sometimes. Just like the bronze bomber did. Nobody of the Wilder fanatics dared to even address these shots. This is the punch that's in question. Now, look at the hook with the fish. It's definitely not going to give you a power increase. So even Cooper, who called out Fury's illegal strikes, admits that it would not give him any advantage in terms of power. Here's the problem I have with it, and the reason why I consider it cheating. The reach difference. Hand in the glove. Look, I cannot touch the bag. My hand in the glove. I put my hand outside the glove, I'm well into the bag. That's a fair point. Then again, it is the referee's job to check it out and make the repercussions. Whether it be long or the sloppy punch, that wasn't hurting him. It was the fucking right hand doing the damage. It was Wilder's uh, uh, mistake in his technical defensive movement that, that enabled that punch to land. And that's why he's not complaining about it, because he ultimately fucked up and got himself hit. As Dewey Cooper states, Wilder lost because the bronze bomber made some defensive mistakes. On top of that, if there was indeed any foul play, the Nevada, or in the first fight's case, the California State Athletic Commission should have conducted an official investigation. Maybe even that WBC could consider stripping Tyson Fury of his belt, none of which happened. In fact, here's WBC President Mauricio Suleiman in an interview with Boxing Social in March of 2020. I was in both camps, uh, corner, uh, dressing rooms before the fight, uh, when they were taping, when they put the gloves on, they had at least three or four inspectors in each dressing room. There were so many people in each dressing room. The referee inspects the fighters when they get to the ring. And I was sitting there and I didn't see anything uh, abnormal. So I think uh, this first, it would have to go through the proper channels in case there's a complaint or an appeal. Then there's the Martin Carefoot story. Well, all I can say is that Fury was caught with higher levels of Nandrolone, allegedly. Why allegedly? 
because this happened in February 2015 around the time Fury fought Christian Hammer. It took the UK anti-doping or UCAT nearly three years and still they couldn't find any clear evidence against Tyson Fury. That's why Fury's win over Hammer hasn't been overturned to a no contest and is still scored a TKO victory for the Gypsy King. Bottom line, these allegations are irrelevant to the result of the Wilder vs Fury 2 fight because this fight took place in the States, not in the UK, and it is five years after the fact. Here's WBC President Suleiman again to put a final nail in the coffin on the farmer situation. 100% support to Tyson Fury. He is the WBC champion of the world. I'm very proud of him. And he has uh, tested negative in so many tests that the WBC performed with the clean boxing program that the promoters performed for his WBC bouts. I cannot comment on anything from 2015. As I said, what, I, what is being said is ridiculous and what credibility uh, such a person could have. Oops! People saying that Tyson Fury was leaning on his neck. Isn't that illegal? You can't lean on a man's neck like that. That is called clenching. Clenching from a tall man. That happens all the time. And I'm gonna tell you, Tyson Fury wasn't the only one leaning on necks. How about this guy? Yeah, your man, Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, leaning on necks. I can show the lean. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Alright, so here we have former IBF Cruiserweight World Champion and former opponent of Tyson Fury when Fury fought in the States first time around, Steve Cunningham. People know I was on my way to beating him before he did his illegal moves to, to KO me. So, um, also, this is about love, not hate. I don't, I'm not hating on Fury. I love the sport of boxing. Well, how can you even say you have love for the sport of boxing and in the same breath you say that you're not hating on Tyson Fury when you made these statements in the past. Only reason this dude is winning fights is because he's big. Shrink him down to 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", he's garbage. Back then it's a, it's a cold and it still runs this through the streets still today. The guys who talk a lot, they chumps. And one thing I can't say about the Klitschko brothers because I've been in a camp with Vladimir they're big, but they work hard, they're talented, they're skillful. If they were normal size, they'd still be champion. This dude right here is just winning fights because he's big. He's big. He leans on guys, he gets them tired. I don't get tired, I get better. First off, people got to realize that, you know, he had to use those forearms and shoving and laying on me because the, my boxing ability was just too much for him. Throws a hook like this, slapping a hook. Nobody, no one's taught to slap a hook like that. Why is Tyson Fury throwing a hook like this, especially at that level of boxing? So this is exactly what he's doing. Why is he slapping it like that? Who slap? Who opens? Who opens their hand and throws a hook? Who, who does that? Steve Cunningham is my man. We ain't got no beef. But I don't. These guys with the whole conspiracy theory is absolutely ridiculous to me. No matter who it was, I would be bringing up this video, or, or, or doing this video, bringing up this issue. There's no way you're throwing a flick hook, all right? When he threw the hook, with his force, the glove was literally back here, back here. No one has yet explained that. Everybody always diverts to the flick jab. No matter who it was, I would be bringing up this video, or, or, or doing this video, bringing up this issue. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe Tyson Fury is sliding his hand down to get the advantage of hitting harder. The punch is landing from the knuckles or the hand wrap and just this thin layer of, of, of leather and not the padding, all right? Sure I can, but see, I just hit it with my knuckle. So, sure I can. I have to turn it all the way over and land it like that. That shit hurts. This is about love, not hate. I don't, I'm not hating on Fury. I love the sport of boxing. No matter who it was, I will be bringing up this video. Proverbs verse 26 to 27. Whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth the stone, it will return upon him. Three years later in April of 2016, Steve Cunningham took on undefeated Polish world cruiserweight champion Krzysztof Glowacki for the WBO cruiserweight world title. 
Here both teams are with the commissioners inspecting the gloves. The woman in the middle is Steve's wife and manager Livy Cunningham. Then one member of Glavatsky's team spots an issue with Cunningham's right glove. Keep in mind that poking with or using the thumb part of boxing gloves is illegal. Can someone explain what is exactly his intention? What he's saying, what he's saying, is that, what, he, what he's saying, Livy, is that is that the thumb on this particular glove is defective, and every other glove is fine. I just don't see it. I'm trying to see what what part it is. I mean, this is defective. That the you know, that he can get poked on this. You see what I'm saying? On the one glove. He's just the one glove. He's saying everything else is fine. The knuckle sits back behind. The thumb sits out in front of the knuckle. The thumb is sitting out further than the knuckle. When you see me punch here, you see my thumb actually landing before the knuckle. Now, I do respect Steve Cunningham as a fighter, and I'm not saying that Cunningham is a cheater. I mean, the gloves were sorted out and then he got soundly beat by Glavatsky. But Cunningham said he'd quote unquote expose Fury like he would anyone else using these so-called illegal tactics. I'm not hating on Fury. I love the sport of boxing. No matter who it was, I would be bringing up this video. Now, as you've seen, there have been many fighters in this decade alone who threw the exact same shot Tyson Fury threw, who had the same exact floppy effect to their boxing gloves. Not only did Cunningham prove nothing with his clips, he showed that like many other people, especially Wilder fanatics, are making attempts to discredit Tyson Fury's win over Deontay Wilder. Me personally, I think lots of people just don't like Tyson Fury and for whatever reason have a personal vendetta against the man. The facts are that for all the world to see, Tyson Fury bullied Deontay Wilder in the rematch, and so far he has passed all of his drugs tests in the WBC's clean boxing program. No matter how many experts will shed their light, as long as there are no official complaints, as long as there's no hard evidence against the Gypsy King, he is still the official WBC and Ring Magazine heavyweight champion of the world. And that pretty much covers all there is to cover on Glovegate. As promised in part 5 of the Glovegate saga, I will tie in all of the previous episodes to give a complete rundown of what is or was Glovegate. Facts, fairness, and proper context. What are your thoughts? Drop them below in the comment section and let's have a conversation. Feel free to like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you enjoy the content. This is Boxing's Objective Observer. Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary day.